but I'm able to do it. So how many of you are in that situation where you'd like to do it and you're unable to do it? Could you just type in yes in the chat box? So I can get an idea. Okay, so quite a few. And how many of you follow whole food plant-based diet and it's possible for you to do it? You can just type in me. Okay, great. Okay. One of them said it's hard for them to follow. Yeah, yeah. I know that. Just started, but not easy. Few challenges. And how many of you are not whole food plant-based, but you're either vegetarian or non-vegetarian? You could uh, type in, we'll, let's say another word. V. v for vegetarian, NV for non-vegetarian, okay. lacto-vegetarian, somebody's typing in. Okay. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for sharing and I'm getting an idea. Um, so there's nobody here who's non-vegetarian? Anybody here who's non-vegetarian? Almost WFPB except for ghee. Non-vegetarian. No, most of them are vegetarian. Okay. Wonderful. So they're vegetarians? And lacto uh, and vegans here, right? And right. some in between. Like, it became easy for me. Initially, it was hard to give up sugar and oil. Okay. That, Tita is saying that. And Chandrika is saying, I used to eat meat, but I've given up for four years. Wonderful. So all of you are kind of on a journey. And I'm guessing that all of you here are... Um, interested in health that's why you're with Shobha right so me too I'm interested in how can we reach our highest health potential and I started out as a doctor in 1981 and I realized along the way that in general medicines never cure right like if we know anybody who's on medication for diabetes or hypertension or anything what medicines do is temporarily remove symptoms, but they never cure. So what's the point of keeping on taking medication? And so I was thinking, how can we reach a level of permanent health, of permanent well-being so that my patients don't need to keep coming back to me? So that was my goal. And I realized that if we live according to nature's laws, that means if we eat and um, live according to what nature or God designed for us, just as a lion will naturally eat meat or a cow will naturally eat grass, we have to think what are the foods that we will instinctively or naturally eat. And the reason we're disconnected from this idea is because we're living in concrete jungles. We're living in a culture of disease and we are disconnected from our instincts. In fact, we have been conditioned to eat in a certain way by our parents, our society and advertisements. And so we don't really think about what is the right food for us. We just do whatever we've been doing, right? And if, if we were to really think about it, imagine if we lived in nature like cows or like lion. If we were in nature and we see fruits and vegetables, instinctively we feel like picking and eating, don't we? But if you see a chicken walk by or a goat or a cow, our mouth doesn't water. Now that's whether we are vegetarian or non-vegetarian or whatever we were doing before. Our mouth doesn't water when we see our potential prey. That means 
we're not really the omnivores that we've been brought up thinking we were. So then what should we be eating? And if you think about it, all the animals in nature can eat their food whole and raw. So we should ideally eat the foods that at least we could eat whole and raw. And that is mainly fruits and vegetables, some seeds and nuts. But think about nuts. It's really hard to open any nut if you live in nature. But squirrels can open nuts that we can't easily open. For example, a squirrel can open a walnut without tools, but we can't. So we need to think, why has nature made it difficult for us to open nuts, but not a squirrel? Or for example, many of us love honey. But if you see a beehive, will your mouth water? Maybe not, right? That means maybe it's not our food. So if we start thinking, what did nature expect from us? we will come closer to what we were actually meant to eat. And then if we start thinking, what did nature expect for us to do? We'll come closer to living according to nature's laws and then it's really difficult to get sick. So if we think about it, everything should be plant-based. And even amongst plants, if you see green fields of wheat and rice, our mouth doesn't water because we can't eat those raw. So let's keep fruits and vegetables high, grains go down, and animal products go off completely. And then, you know, we're the only species that makes our food less nutritious before eating by refining, such as sugar and oil and white rice and white flour, or even peeling vegetables and fruit. So ideally, don't peel anything that you can't peel with your bare hands because just think about what would you do if you really lived in nature, right? Without tools or with very basic tools. And then we are the only species that sprays our food with poison, like pesticides, so that other animals don't eat it and then we eat it. Isn't that a shame? So how can we think about eating as far as possible, and it's quite easy to do that in the US, organic foods, right? Because chemicals are carcinogens and chemicals are hormone disruptors. And today we have so many hormonal problems, diabetes and PCOD and hypothyroidism and infertility and menstrual problems, and menopausal problems, and prostate enlargement, breast, prostate, ovarian cancers, to name just a few, right? So these are the diseases that have become so common because we have chemicals everywhere. And the chemicals are not just in our non-organic food, but in the packaged food, and the processed food, and then also the toothpaste, and the mouthwash, the things that we often don't think about. And you know, whatever we put on our skin can be absorbed as well. The soaps and shampoos and perfumes and deodorants and, you know, hand sanitizers or whatever else we're using, cosmetics of all kinds. And then there are the home care products that we may be inhaling in. The window cleaners and toilet cleaners and air fresheners and, you know, I forgot to mention perfume. Perfume has some of the most uh, harmful chemicals in it and often perfume is added to almost everything. So we need to reduce all these chemicals in our lives as much as possible in order to come closer to what we were meant to do in order to get well. I'm going to share my um screen share oh uh shobha do you think i could yeah i it? just i just okay. allowed okay great so 
yeah uh so let me get okay can you all see my screen yes okay. yes we can okay, great yeah so okay so as shobha said i'm the founder of sharan and sharan stands for sanctuary for health and reconnection to animals in nature we are disconnected from health because we're disconnected from animals and nature and we can reconnect just by thinking about the ways we were meant to be now i want to start with a short video and this is a video of a person that you may know who is an american who had who loved food who was a uh sports person but he got heart disease and had a stent put in and then another stent and so he knew that he had to change his lifestyle let me just play yeah how did you lose so much weight uh, what kind of diet did you my uh, the short answer is i went on essentially a plant based diet i live on um um beans, legumes, vegetables, fruit. I drink a protein supplement every morning, I, no dairy. I drink almond milk mixed in with fruit and a protein powder. So I get the protein for the day when I start the day out. And it changed my whole metabolism and I lost 24 pounds. And I got back to basically what I weighed in high school. But I did it for a different reason. But I mean, I wanted to lose a little weight, but I didn't ever dream this would happen. I did it because after I had this stent put in, I realized that even though it happens quite often that after you have bypasses, you lose the veins because they're thinner and weaker than arteries. The truth is that it clogged up, which means that the cholesterol was still calling buildup in my vein that was part of my bypass. And thank God I could take the stents. I don't want it to happen again. So I did all this research and I saw that 82% of the people since 1986 who have gone on a plant-based, no dairy, no meat of any kind, no chicken, turkey. I eat very little fish. Once in a while, I'll have a little fish. Not often. If you can do it, 82% of the people who've done that have begun to heal themselves. Their arterial blockage cleans up. The calcium depositor in their heart breaks up. This movement has been led by a doctor named Caldwell Esselstein at the Cleveland Clinic, Dean Ornish, whom you know, in California, the doctors Campbell, father and son, who wrote the China study, and a handful of others. But we now have 25 years of evidence. And so I thought, well, since I need to lose a little weight for Chelsea's wedding. Imagine that he started this experiment in 2010. And that was already a long, I mean, people had been doing this already for a long time when he found out and he changed his lifestyle and he started seeing results. He actually started, if I'm not mistaken, in May 2010. And these are the results by September, just in a few months. Now, he was a burger lover and he loved all kinds of foods. So did this last? And I'm just going to take How you to the... Sweet. What kind of diet? Did you... Sorry. I mean, you talked about the fact that you love to eat. I mean, this is... I know, you know, I like the stuff I eat. I like the vegetables, the fruits, the, the beans, the, the stuff I eat now, I like. I, I like it. Do you call yourself a vegan now then? Well, I suppose I am if I don't eat dairy or meat or fish, you know. So you, you cut all that out. I mean, do you... you the only thing, once in a while, in, literally in uh, well over a year now, at Thanksgiving, I had one bite of turkey. And you, you oh, just keep looking sorry. better and better. Sorry. Okay. So you can see that in the first year, maybe he had a little fish. In the second year, one bite of turkey. But as he went along, he he likes the food that he's eating. And that's because we're creatures of habit. And these are the foods that anyway we're instinctively meant to eat. 
we've conditioned ourselves to eat other things such as ghee or whatever else you may be eating that keeps you from being closer to whole food plant-based. And you you just keep looking better and better. You look fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You I, I are, and I'm I'm vegan as well. And I know that you're eating plant based diet, which is uh, does it? Do you just feel much better? It, oh yeah, I think you know. I would say this, particularly if you're older, when you start this. First, it's just a good thing to do. It'll be healthier for you, and you put less stress on your cardiovascular system. But if you're older and you've had heart problems, like I did you can go vegan and still get in trouble. Yeah, yeah. If you eat too much uh, white, like processed carbs. Right. You know, it's really, really important because carbs convert to sugar in your body. The main thing is to keep the sugar levels down. Well, you look fantastic. And there's no way you're eating a lot of sugar because you've lost, how much weight have you lost? This is the third week in a row where I will weigh less than I did the day I finished high school. Wow. <laughs> So you can literally see that he looks better, his skin looks better, and he's slimming down. And this went on, you know, I'm going to skip this one. But this was in 2013 that Clinton came to India. And this was a, a note in the Times of India. While we're on Clinton, we couldn't help notice that the former US president was looking much leaner than the last time we saw him. Uh, then we last saw him. While he has given up his junk food cravings, hamburgers, steaks, barbecue, and French fries, after undergoing two separate heart procedures, even the sublime spread laid out for Uday Kotak's guests at the NCPA last night didn't tempt him. In fact, your diarist can tell you that Clinton's dinner was the simplest of Indian meals. Rice, aloo, gobi, yellow dal without any tadka, and some Greek salad. It later emerged that Clinton has turned vegan with a vengeance, which is why he even passed up his favorite kali dal because it was loaded with cream and butter, as in similar to ghee. No matter where he travels, the reformed foodie has been sticking faithfully to vegetables, fruits, and beans discounting a bite of turkey at Thanksgiving. Now, he's not the only one, but the reason I showed him is because he's been doing it for a number of years and he's consistent. But the kind of results that we can get has been shown everywhere. And I'm just going to show you a, a short video from a TV show. Type 2 diabetes is a leading cause of heart disease and stroke in this country, and being diagnosed can feel like a life sentence. But a Houston cardiologist says you can reverse type 2 diabetes and heart disease if you're willing to make some dramatic changes. Healthwatch reporter Beth Galp has the story. Get rid of insulin, control blood sugar, minimize medication in just a few days. Sound too good to be true? Rosalie Isles did it. She was hospitalized, overweight, suffering from hypertension and high blood pressure when she met Dr. Baxter Montgomery, and he immediately put her on a special diet. But three days after I went on this diet, I was taken off the insulin. I had been on insulin since 1987. I no longer take insulin. By getting on a plant-based diet and getting it completely off animal flesh, uh, it allowed us to get off the insulin and it allows her to lose weight. Rosalie says she lost 35 pounds in two months and reversed her heart disease. This is Rosalie before the diet. Now at the age of 81, she's confident enough to model in fashion shows. I feel like a different person ever since I started coming to Dr. Montgomery. My life has been different. I'm completely changed. The dreaded skill. Victor Fuller had just undergone his second life-saving open heart surgery when he turned to Dr. Montgomery. The diet helped him get his heart disease under better control. He no longer has type 2 diabetes, and he lost 50 pounds. At first, it was a little shaky there. I didn't want to do it because I'm a meat and potatoes man. But then after I, he told me the ins and outs of what he could do for my body, how I could cleanse my body, 
and I gave it a try. Uh, the weight loss is very nice and it's cosmetic, but the real magic has happened under the hood with him. Someone with the amount of vascular disease that he has should not function at nearly the capacity that he functions at. Okay, we won't see more of this, but this is what motivated me to change as well, because I realized that if we make simple lifestyle changes, over a period of time, you'll enjoy them and it's easy, but the kind of results that we get is unbelievable. Even I, as a doctor, couldn't imagine the kind of results my patients were getting. Because when I started, I had a lot of patients who had small things, little niggling things, and they wouldn't want to change. But then I had other patients that had one foot in the grave. And they were willing to do everything. And the kind of results they got, I can't even begin to tell you. It was just mind-blowing. And I'll show you some of these in the end. Now, does it always work? Yes, because we're going closer to what nature or God designed for us. That means if you feed a lion meat, it will always be better than feeding a lion grass. And if you feed a um, cow grass, it will always be better than feeding a cow meat, right? We need to eat the foods that are natural to our species. So I already told you the logic of a plant-based diet, but let's talk a little bit about vegetarian versus vegan. I think that vegetarians and non-vegetarians, and I live in India and so many of you are vegetarian, not vegetarians and non-vegetarians get the same diseases. Diabetes, hypertension, cancer, heart disease, autoimmune diseases, kidney disease, no matter what, it's all the same. And that's because meat and milk have the same properties. High protein, high fat and no fiber. So whether, you know, if we go out for dinner, say, a non-vegetarian may order chicken. And what will a vegetarian order? Paneer or cheese, right? So it all ends up the same and everyone gets sick. But if we go closer to what we were meant to eat, as in vegan, it's a step forward. And if we go to whole food plant-based, it's even better. So as I said, you know, we've been conditioned by advertising. And so I always tell people that if you want to know what to eat and what not to eat, look at all the advertisements and don't eat that. Okay, I'm just looking at the messages. Okay, I'm going to answer questions later on. Yeah. Because I see that some messages are coming, but we'll yes. answer them later on. We'll answer yeah? them later, Dr. Nandita. Yeah, thank you. And then... Organic. We talked about why organic as well. And always include a lot of raw foods in your diet. I would say at least 25% raw. And if you start having 25% raw food, you'll go closer and closer to more and more raw. And your health will be better because we were all meant to eat only raw, right? But we don't need to go all the way. We can get well, look how beautiful our body is and how amazing it is in its healing that we can go at least a large portion of the way and we get well. The body is always working to heal. Now, often we think that we may have deficiencies of protein or calcium or even vitamins and people take supplements. And do we really need any supplement? Just think about it. Nature is perfect. We would never need any supplement if we were eating and living according to nature. But because of our modern lifestyles, we may need today vitamins B12 and D. Those are the only two supplements that we're likely to need if you're really on a healthy diet. And we can talk more about that later too if you have questions. Now, if we are trying to get rid of disease, we should always work at the level of cause. For example, when we 
go to a doctor and doctor gives us medicines, doctor is working at removing the symptoms. In this way, you will have to take medicines over and over again because you're just removing symptoms. But it's our body's duty to produce symptoms when we're doing something wrong in order to tell us. So how can we start looking at the level of cause? For example, let me give you a simple example, diabetes. When we get diabetes, we go to the doctor. Doctor tells us, cut down sugar, cut down carbohydrates, take these medicines. But anyway, this never cures. Why not? Because sugar is not, or sugar or carbohydrates are not the cause of diabetes. High blood sugar is the result of diabetes. So cutting out sugar can only handle symptoms. But the cause of diabetes is insulin resistance. And the cause of insulin resistance are many, but the number one cause is fat. And fat comes from oil, ghee, butter, as well as all animal products. Now look at the beauty. All animal products are full of fat, like if you boil meat, fish, chicken or milk. You get fat on top. But if you boil any plant fat like peanuts, a whole, whole plant which is full of fat like peanuts, coconut, cashews, avocados or um, sesame seeds, anything. If you boil, you will not get fat on top. And that's because the fiber in the plant holds on to fat. Only plants have fiber. There's no fiber in animal products. That's why the fat gets released and floats. Now, if we've accumulated fat in our body and that fat is causing disease, we can take it out by adding more fiber, by eating more whole plants. When we refine plants, then we're taking out the fiber. But if we eat whole plants, then we have it all. So we have to understand the cause of every disease. And that's all I do these days. No matter which disease we want to get rid of, understand the causes, remove the causes, the disease has to go away every time. Now, we can talk a little bit about beyond food and I'll say a few words. I already talked about chemicals, but you know we should get rest at the right time. There's a reason it's dark at night. And uh, rest is as important as exercise. And then, of course, water and fresh air and staying away from harmful substances, like even tea and coffee. We don't give tea and coffee to our children just because we know they're harmful and they're addictive. But some of us have it every single day. Now, I understand that maybe everything cannot be changed overnight. But I do want to say that it's not as difficult as we think. And I know this because I conduct a 21-day health retreat where we do all the tests at the beginning and all the tests at the end. And during the retreat, we just work on cutting down medications. And many people leave with no medications and some people who come in, say, on 24 medications, go out on four. That's how fast the body is able to heal. And they can see that their reports are better or same, even after cutting down all these medications, just by making lifestyle changes. Now, I'm a homeopath by uh, training. And, and a medical doctor, but my the reason I'm a homeopath is because I believe that mind and body are intricately connected. Like if you're stressed, you can get physical disease. And if you have physical disease, you can be stressed. And therefore, mind and body needs to be looked into together. And I found that not only do we get better at the level of physical 
but we also get better at the level of state of mind when we change our diet. And that's because we experience emotions through hormones. Like for example, if you're happy, it's because of dopamine or serotonin. But stress hormones are adrenaline and cortisol. When we are stressed, we produce these hormones. When animals are stressed, they produce those hormones. If we make a cow repeatedly pregnant, take away her baby and take away her milk, it's like rape and stealing. Invariably, the cow is stressed. And the way the dairies are functioning these days, even if they were not taking away the milk, the cows would be stressed because of the little space they have and the inability to live their natural behaviors. And so the milk that we consume is not only full of hormones like estrogen and progesterone and the hormones that cause all these hormonal diseases, but also the stress hormones that we have and we have stress. And so the very best thing we can do even for psychological issues is cut down the stress hormones through the animal products. Now, today the main goal was to ask you, what are the challenges? And yes, I, I'm seeing some of the questions now and you know, you don't need to, so I'm just going to answer some of them. Marisa, um, do we need to take notes or will I share slides? Uh, Shobha is doing a recording and Shobha, will you be sharing the recording? Yes, I will. Okay, so there you have the it for the rest of your life. And if you miss that, you, you know, we have a YouTube channel and there are so many talks there and there are talks on different kinds of diseases as well, like diabetes or hypertension or autoimmune diseases. And you can go there and learn more as well. Now, um, okay, the our next question is, what are your thoughts uh, about tofu? Is it okay as a protein? And um, so I, I can answer questions or we can go back to the topic, but I'll answer a I few think, questions right yeah, now. Yeah, I think we can I, go back to the topic now, um, Dr. Nandita, and I'll post the questions for you in, in just okay, a bit okay, when we okay. when you're done. So I'd like to know, like if are you convinced at least that a whole food plant-based diet is useful in uh, reversing disease okay pramjit says pramit says yes and okay many of you are saying yes so now i'd like to know if you're convinced but unable to do it what do you think are the challenges Okay, that's nice. I'm so grateful that all of you think that it is the solution. And Sudha says traveling, eating out, okay, habit, okay, right, the results are amazing. Thank you, Padma, for sharing that. Prior habits, taste buds, cooking without oil is difficult. Daily cooking, social commitments, not understanding soy versus nut milk, how much protein, that is expensive. Okay, great. So I'm going to take some of these one by one hmm? and, and we'll just discuss them. So the first is traveling. And I know that Shobha is traveling right now, right? Shobha is in California and so am I, but Shobha lives in Atlanta. So, Shobha, are you whole food plant-based when you travel? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So am I most of the time. And sometimes I may not be, like sometimes I can't find any food without oil or I might not find a totally unrefined, um, maybe if I'm having rice, I might not find whole rice and I may find only white rice. But I know that since 90% or I should say more than that, 
95% of the time I'm eating whole food plant-based and my body has a lot of reserves. Nothing's going to happen if I have some refined products sometimes. Also, I may not be organic all the time, but uh, I am most of the time. And you all are so lucky to be in the US where almost anywhere you can get vegan options. So here's what I think that, you know, when I was vegetarian, I used to be vegetarian before I became vegan. And I always traveled a lot for work. And when I travel and I'd look at a menu, I'd only see the things that were vegetarian because I was vegetarian. So it was my mindset that helped me stay vegetarian. And now that I'm vegan, I only see the foods that are vegan on the menu. And so then I just have to look at what has too much oil and what doesn't have oil or what can be made more whole food and pick and choose. And sometimes if I really like something and it's not whole food, I give myself the chance to eat that and enjoy it once in a while and then go back to whole food because I really like whole food now. You know, when I switched, I also thought that without oil, things will not be good. And right now I'm staying with my brother and half the time he cooks and he loves to cook and um, he's vegan as well but he's not whole food plant-based as in he uses a little oil here and there. And um, when he cooks, he uses very little oil and I eat it. But when I cook and I say, hey, I've made this all without oil, he's surprised because it tastes good. And then he tells me to cook the next time. So he's learning over a period of time just to eat without oil. Like, Today, my father said, oh, I remember you could get um, vegan cutlets like, um, you know, vegetable cutlets at Trader Joe's. And do you still get them? And my brother said, no, I make them at home because those look too oily for me. I can't buy them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, things change by themselves over time. And so when uh, when you're eating out or when you're traveling all you need to do is look for the right options. And if nothing else, a salad is always available. But here, you know, you can even go to, I think, I'm not sure because I haven't been, but a restaurant like Taco Bell or Chipotle and order something that's relatively healthy and vegan. Yeah. So why can't we do it? Right? Right. In fact, we can we can find the best vegan options in a steak place as well. Oh yeah, in the restaurants that because all their sides are are the best. Okay. You skip the main steak and then they have steamed broccoli, they have baked potato, baked sweet potato, and then you ask them for some nice salsa that you can pour over your baked potato and that adds a lot of flavor. So you can make a really good meal at a steak restaurant as well. Thank you, Shobha, for sharing that. And, you know, me, I don't like eating out so much. Yeah. And so I haven't tried all these places. Like every time somebody says, do you want to go out to eat? And tomorrow some friends are coming over to meet me. And they said, would you like to go out to eat? And I said, why don't you eat here instead? You know, so. Um, but Sean, I know. So I think I've answered the questions on traveling and eating out because they're similar. But mm -hmm. one of the things that you might miss when you travel is local flavors if you can't eat everything. And I think even that more and more, there are vegan options available everywhere in the world. And the fact that they're healthy and you feel good afterwards means you don't come home sick. You come home feeling great and energetic. So I think nowadays, there's almost no excuse. Even in um, even in the U.S. hotels where they serve pretty bad breakfasts, you can get something that's whole food, plant based, like oatmeal, oatmeal. or uh, you know, fruit or something like that. Absolutely. 
But I went and stayed at a hotel and I carried my fruit. Anyway, because it was organic. <laughs> so, but that was just, uh, you know, because I wanted to and we could. Now, Sean says habit. I, yeah. Yes. So I have a set of questions, Dr. Nandita. Mm -hmm. um, if you're done with your presentation and would like to answer questions now, Actually, or do you want to I go just back want to, to go through the other... Um, questions? No, the other uh, challenges. Oh, like okay. habit, right? Because I think habit mm -hmm. is a really important challenge because mm -hmm. we are creatures of habit and when we're Indian, we may like Indian food or we like things to be cooked in ghee or we also like to eat foods the way we've been brought up. That's why maybe the ghee came in, you know, and the habit and also maybe the habit of not knowing how to cook without oil. Right? Yeah. So I just want to explain to you that like these are things that are really easy to learn and cooking without oil is it actually is faster and it tastes better. For example, if I'm making a vegetable without oil, I can make the tadka, the tempering, and keep it in a bottle and keep it for a whole month. So I don't have to do the tempering every day. And I've seen in Shobha's house that she does the same. And then I can have the oil replacers like coconut or roasted crushed peanut or roasted crushed sesame all ready. So... Um, you know, the coconut would always be grated and put in my freezer so I can use it anytime. And, you know, coconut or uh, peanuts or sesame tastes better than oil anyway. So eventually <laughs> your dish has to taste better. So it's just the habit of the way we cook. You know, you just look for the oil and you start peeling the vegetables. And so you're missing out on all the nutrients because the maximum nutrient is just under the skin. So it's just because of the habits, but habits can be changed. And, you know, Shobha, that's one of the reasons that we have 21 day retreat mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it takes 21 days to change a habit. Yes. And so when you start eating that food, you start liking it. Mm -hmm. And we have buffets so you can pick and choose whatever you like. And then we have cooking classes every day. And in the last week, everyone has to be on a team to cook for the whole group. And so by that time, you always learn how to cook. And even if you're not going to cook, you know the instructions that you can tell people. But if you don't have that chance, then I'm going to share my screen or I won't do it right now. But you can go to our website, sharan-india.org. And go under events and you will see a basic cooking class. You can also go to our YouTube channel and view by playlists and look at the cooking videos. They all teach you how to cook without oil. And once you learn, cooking without oil will become your new habit. And it'll be easy. Just like Clinton changed his habit. Okay, mm -hmm. and then I see taste buds. Taste buds is a big one. So here's my advice for you. If you really feel like some eating something, and this is Diksha's um, challenge. So Diksha, if you, and everyone else, of course. And so if you see something that's really off the charts, but you feel like having it, you're dying to have it. Just have it. Take it and eat it slowly and enjoy every bite and then see how you feel after that and mm -hmm. then memorize that and then the next time it comes in front of you do the same bring back the memory see do I want to feel this way and the chances are that your mind will say yes I mean I just want to eat this and so you eat it again and again, memorize it. And I did this, you know, there's this amazing uh, samosa place outside my um, office. And I used to go there whenever I was stressed, you know, it could be once in two months or once in 
three months, I would go and have a samosa. And I would just have one and enjoy it thoroughly and come back. But now it's more than 12 or 15 years, 12 years maybe, more than 12 years that I've never even been there. And it doesn't even tempt me. And I don't have to do anything to not go there. It's not willpower. I'm just not, like my feet are just not taking me there. Mm -hmm. So it literally happens over time, you know. So when I really wanted to eat a samosa, I would just eat it. And the same happens now, like now I'm in the US and I remember some things that I used to eat, but they contain oil. So maybe I take some, eat it, enjoy it, remember. And then maybe it'll never come back, but I'm not so much in the US. So I don't know what will happen, but I'm just saying that it doesn't have to be a deprivation. It has to be made into an enjoyment. So if you're really dying to have something, just have it and see how you feel. It'll go away by itself. Mm -hmm. And then social commitments. Ganesh says, said social commitments. And Ganesh, here's my um, idea for social commitments. You know, Whenever I'm, like when I turned vegan, no matter where I went, I was very strict with my diet. And people saw me, many of my friends are doctors, and they saw me, and they can see that I'm not sick, I have plenty of energy, I don't have any health problems, I don't take any medicines. And over a period of time, they even ask me, can you tell me what to do, right? So maybe they do it, some of them don't, even after that. But um, over a period of time, they learn how to eat. But here, I saw something really amazing. So I'm in Roseville, and there's this uh, Chef AJ. Maybe some of you have heard of Chef AJ. And if you haven't, do view her YouTube channel. So Chef AJ has a talk like this on her show every single day. And she has a whole bunch of followers. And so I came here and she said, do you want to come to a potluck at my house? I said, okay. I didn't know what the potluck would be like, but there were 40 people there. And all of them had a story to tell. I couldn't imagine. And, you know, I asked Chef AJ, why did you move here? And she said, I used to live in LA and then I moved to the desert. But then there were not too many people who were vegan there. And I knew that I had to live amongst vegan people. So I moved. And now we have a huge social life. And I went out with her for dinner one day. I um, actually, I went out with her for dinner one day, her and her husband. Then I went to the potluck. Then I went to out with her to a meetup for dinner. And so many people came and they were all vegan. And, you know, all of them are meeting up regularly, like two or three times a week. And they eat according mm -hmm. to their need. And so mm -hmm. all these people were whole food plant-based. So it's so possible. I mean, this is not possible in India. We won't get such a big group. But here, you just have to go to meet up and look for vegan meetups and you'll find something. And I have one, Dr. Nandita, every month. So those of you who are in Atlanta, please take the time, the energy, and the will to please come and join. I used to get 40 people before COVID, but now somehow they've all dwindled away, but we're slowly building it back up. We get about 15 to 20 people joining the potluck. Every month we have a free potluck at my home. Yeah, and I found that all these people at the potlucks and meetups, they all know each other. They become best mm -hmm. friends. Yes. And some of them even marry each other in the end. <laughs> you know? Right. They share so recipes. It's really great. Because once you taste the food, you want to t take that recipe home as well, not just the taste of that food, you know? So yeah. it's, it's an amazing community building um, endeavor that uh, building healthy communities is one of the goals of all our organizations and it goes really well yes social commitments 
basically social chemism is also dr nandita like you mentioned you eat the best you can at that yeah. social exactly. engagement exactly and if you have to um if sometimes the host makes something special and you don't want to hurt their feelings you have a teaspoon of it happy content enjoy it as long as it's plant based right yes so yes. let's not give, go way off yes. but here's what we can do we can always bring them a dish right so then you're assured of having something to eat as well right whether it's a potluck you have to bring a dish but if it's not a potluck you can always bring them a dish that's that to put on the table mm -hmm. so then you have something to eat always yeah we are coming up oh. on the hour dr nandita yeah sorry i said we are coming up on the hour we have 5 oh, okay, minutes okay. to okay. go so i do want to quickly answer the one about it being expensive yeah uh -huh. so yeah. do we have to end exactly at 7 no we don't we okay. can go on so let's have a, let it go on a little bit longer okay sure so what about it being expensive and truly well i make everything at home from scratch and once you get into the habit of making things from scratch it doesn't take time now my brother lives alone and he makes everything from scratch and stop buying ready made things except for the milk he buys the the plant based milk but otherwise he doesn't buy much ready made and so automatically the prices come down and mm -hmm. here you have places like costco which even sell organic stuff so honestly it's not as expensive as we think once we decide to change um to, uh, to you know to transition to a plant based lifestyle what is expensive is dr nandita the processed uh plant based vegan products for right. example cheese for example sour cream cream cheese vegan butter but then this is where vegan is not the right path to follow here you have to be whole foods plant based and minimally minimally processed you know extra minimally processed so i just want to say that here we have fabulous recipes for sour cream or cheeses on our website and once these become a part of your thing you can make it and keep it and use it whenever you wish it's not that difficult it's really easy i mean sometimes it takes more time to go out shopping and bring it all back than to make it at home so and, and also remember the time when we used to make paneer at home yeah so when we there was no store bought paneer and we used to make paneer at home we would consume it very infrequently because of the labor and process associated with making the paneer and it would be like you know a, an overnight process or a longer process and the same thing happens with all these you know almond cheese or cashew cheese or anything that you can make the goal is you know the more tedious the process the less you'll consume of it and that's the goal especially like all the processed foods like the fried foods that we like even if it's chakli or any one of the chivda or any of these it's easy to run a scissors through the packet open it and eat it but if you were to make the same thing even if it's deep fried at home it would be a whole longer process you would make it less often and consume way infrequently true that's really true you know even nuts if we didn't have to shell them ourselves then we can eat a lot more that's what's happening but if we had to shell them ourselves we'll automatically eat less so we have to think how long did this take to make should i really eat it or not mm -hmm. so thank you shobha for that one so i'm just looking and i think that many of the others have kind of been covered it takes a lot of effort really it's faster and two questions okay. i have it here please. Yes. i'm a post menopausal woman with high lpa count i'm a vegan any suggestions to get lpa count down okay look you know i don't want to answer these personal questions i want mm -hmm. to answer questions which will work for everyone so mm -hmm. could you pick and choose those because we're running out okay. of time right okay okay like okay your take on and boiled rice versus brown rice versus black yeah. rice so any unpolished rice will do 
But boiled rice is usually, even if it may not be white, it is uh, boiled and polished. So we don't want to use that. So we want all the fiber to be there. Uh, uh, Shobha, over to you. You just tell me those questions which are suitable for everyone. What about the co concept of protein that we have to consume way more protein than we are consuming through um, lentils and dals and even rice has protein or vegetables have protein. So what do you have to say to that, Dr. Nandita? So you know what? We don't know anybody with protein deficiency, right? It's very rare. Protein deficiency only occurs in starvation. And we should keep in mind, where does a cow or horse or elephant get their protein from? Where do all the herbivores get their protein from? And, you know, plants are the only source of protein. Only plants can make protein. So if we eat plants, we're getting the protein directly. And the best part is that we won't have excess because excess protein is also a major cause of disease, just like excess fat. Yeah. For example, excess protein causes gout and kidney disease and cancers and acidity and autoimmune animal proteins cause autoimmune diseases and also allergies. Allergies are caused by excess protein. So all of these can be curbed if we don't have excess protein. Mm -hmm. And for um, young adults or young teenagers or youth who are in sports and other things, do they need excess protein? Do they need all these protein powders and supplements and all Absolutely this? Absolutely not. Even if it's not. vegan. Would nature be that stupid or God? Not at all. We don't need any man-made products. Just think about the chimpanzees. They're as close to us as can be. And they eat a lot of fruit and they're muscular as well. And a really good movie to see for this is The Game Changers. Because these are all athletes that are on a plant-based diet and have done really well. There are also plant, I mean, fitness enthusiasts that are totally uh, fruitarians. And there are even people who are breatharians, who are muscular. So how do we build good muscles? By exercising. Exactly. Um, Neil here asks, what are the sources of fat if you are looking to put on weight? How do we put on some weight if we are too thin? Okay, so, uh, you know, when you are on a plant-based, whole food plant-based diet, you will eventually reach your own best weight, the best weight for your body. Initially, though, there will be, you might be underweight because there's a cleansing process that takes place. But over a period of time, we all get back to our own good weight. And you will be looking younger and be more energetic and looking better than ever before in your life. And we all reach our optimal weight. Yes. Nature has a way of uh, keeping our weight optimal. We don't have to try too hard. Yeah. And uh, um, protein in soy versus nut milks. Um, about nut milks, again, we should mention, Dr. Nandita, that uh, you really don't need any milk. You don't need any yogurt for everyday living and gut bacteria and all of this. So if you can cover a little bit on, you know, milks, plant milks and okay. yogurt. So milk is a food that every mammal produces for her young. And in nature, no animal drinks another animal's milk. Pigs don't drink goat's milk. Monkeys don't drink... Um, elephant's milk and we we also as babies love our mother's milk but when we're first given cow's milk nobody appreciates it so instinctively we know that it's not our food but then we get conditioned to have it all the time so we don't need milk because we're eating other foods that uh, provide us all the nutrients that we need and um, you can have plant-based milk if you want, just for taste, but not for need. Same with yogurt also. You don't need it for the probiotics or prebiotics or whatever. Your gut bacteria, if you eat whole foods, plant-based, maintains itself very well. There are enough probiotics and other things 
that your gut uh, bacteria and not only that your gut health will be really optimal. You don't need anything external and all these pills of probiotic pills. There are people who take probiotic supplements and prebiotic supplements and all kinds of supplements. Really not read it. Food as supplements. Yes. You know what? Before we end, I just want to um, and, and then we can go back to questions so that people who don't have time can leave. So I just want to go back to my screen share and share a few things. So mm -hmm. we talked about the challenges and I just want to tell you mm -hmm. a few things yes. that Sharon offers. So we have a lot of information on our website and FAQs as well and a very informative YouTube channel. You, all you need to do is type in Sharon India YouTube into Google or whatever browser you're using. And then we have some publications that are available to you for free. So I'm just going to share our website and show you a little bit around. So yes. if you go to our website and people have asked about our 21 day retreat, I'm going to show you that. So we have all kinds of cooking classes and different things here. The but first one was 21 day diabetes reversal program. Yeah, right there on top no okay no no that's an online program but i just want to show you our 21 day health retreat this is it and it also has all the details here i'm just opening it so this has all the um details about it like where it is and what can you mm -hmm. do and testimonials from it and what a whole day will include Mm -hmm. and what are the prices of course and when you have to pay for it to catch the early bird and by the way the early bird for this year is end of april and the program is on the starts on the 11th of june uh so these are all the details that you can learn straight from here so i don't need to tell you all about it i also want to show you our resources I want to just add, Dr. Nandita, this is the best vacation that you can gift yourself with and your loved ones for their anniversary, for their 50th, 60th birthdays, any of these markers. This is a wonderful, wonderful gift and it's life changing. So please, you well, know, eventually, what do we need in this world except health, right? Yes. Because without health, we have nothing. Uh, so these are our publications and some of them are available for free download, like uh, free PDF. The ones that say free PDF are available for free oh. download. So do look here. And okay. here we have more than 600 really delicious, I mean, almost 600 really delicious Whole food plant-based recipes. I don't know why it's not opening right now. It's going a bit slow, but it'll open soon. So, yeah. so please don't uh, miss looking at these because it's really helpful. We also have a consultation section and we have a team of doctors and nutritionists that can help you out. And you can just register for consultations here. So uh, we have all this to help you out. Mm -hmm. Okay, Shobha. Now I'm back to questions. I just wanted to let people who are leaving know what we have to offer them. Did you want to play that video of your father? Oh, yes, that's true. Okay, sorry. I'm just going to share my screen again. And uh, um, yes, so I just want to share with you. Uh, these are some of the amazing foods that we have at 21 day retreat, just a few. And here are some images of our 21 day retreat. And this is my father. He's 90. But this video was taken when he was 89. And he's actually I've come to the US this time to bring him here. This video was taken by Generation V. And he was brought up just like we were all brought up. Even for him, it was difficult to change, but he did it. So let's hear. I how. became a vegan at the age of 52. And now it's been 36 years that I've been vegan. <clears throat> My name is Surendra Shah. I am 88 years old. And uh, I've been brought up as a vegetarian. When people ask me how hard it is to be vegan, 
I said, it is not at all hard to, when you're in India. That much I can say. Because you can always find uh, vegan options anywhere you go. Except perhaps in a train or a plane where there's fixed menu. And even in, in the plane, you can ask for a vegan meal. And not that it's good, but I live in uh, Mumbai on Marine Drive. Uh, I've been brought up here as a kid. I've been here since 1939. If I wake up very early, then I do my work. Or rounds. I will even do a puzzle, so Sudoku. I do a Sudoku Samurai. But about at four, between 4 and 4.30, I go for a morning walk. I walk for about five kilometers, roughly about five, six times in a week. Uh, that's quite regular. Come back have shower, and I have two glasses of smoothies every day, followed by a little later, followed by fruits, and then another gap, and I have my breakfast. Then my main meal is a lunch. Before the meal, I have a bowl of salad, which I think is important to have greens. In the evening, I have some fruits, but otherwise uh, dinner, which is very light done. When I made the transition, I did it at one go. I just gave up dairy uh, on our Gujarati New Year's Day, and I haven't gone back from that. All I remember is about the cruelty to calf, and that is the reason I gave up, not because of health consideration. The health is just a bonus. I gave up eggs when I was uh, in 1980. At the same time, I gave up uh, use of leather and silk. I came to know about the slaughter of animals. And, but I didn't know at that time what was happening in the dairy industry. That I came to know in 1986, when I was 52. I was told that male calves, as soon as they're born, they're tied up and they're left to die just by starvation. I thought that was very cruel. I decided to give up dairy at that time. To eat vegan food, uh, I never had a problem at home, for sure. The only, only change was I, I used to have uh, chas and dai every day. Uh, that went away. Milk, milk, which I used to drink, that probably I gave up even earlier than that. The ghee on our chapatis went away. But other than that, there was not much uh, change. I never had tea coffee in my life, so that was never a problem. And my families, uh, my mother, my sister, they all accepted I'm vegan. That's it. Then nobody says why or you shouldn't or you, you need calcium or you need protein or anything, nothing. So it's never too late. You can change even if you're 18, but I would recommend you change as early as you can because then your health is remaining good before diseases start. And I've always enjoyed good health and I'm happy that I changed. Okay, so just to share that he's um, not on any medications, only vitamins B12 and D. And recently, even Chief Justice Chandrachud has become vegan since the last several months. And he it's talks to about... Yes, sir, Ayurveda and yoga in your Yes, I do. I, I, I woke up this morning at 3.30 uh, to do my yoga. And uh, I, of course, I, I follow a vegan diet myself. For the last five months, I'm completely vegan and I'm continuing it. Uh, but I try and focus on uh, a holistic pattern of uh, life, which begins with what you eat, of course. Okay. So if they can do it, so can we, right? I thank you all for hanging out here. And now I'm open to answering even the other questions that are there, Shobha, if you have time. Okay, you're muted though. I have time. Those who wish to stay back can stay back for questions. Um, if not, um, I will be sending out uh, the details of uh, Sharon website as well as their 21-day retreat and 21-day nutrition plan and all of that. Um, all the uh, links to all of that. 
And also here in the US, I have a WhatsApp support group, which I will share with you the link for. You can join. I show you how to make the dishes that we all love here in all the different cuisines. And uh, the Sharon website also has all the Western cuisines as well built in. And I do share all your flyers with my support group and my teams all the time, um, mm. Dr. Thank Randita, you. and the recipes too. So I just love everything that you do at Sharon, and I'm really appreciative of it, of uh, how well you are um, helping people make a change and building, you know, healthy communities. So... Um, what I want else? to answer the question of the tofu and the soy because that's oh. such a common question. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, soy is just a bean, but tofu is refined refined soy because you have to make soy into soy milk and throw out the fiber, some of it, not all, throw out some of the fiber and then coagulate it to make the tofu. So I recommend that no more than say 250 or 300 grams of tofu per week. Like let's not make everything into tofu because we don't need that much protein. Tofu should be eaten just for pleasure if you like it. And if you don't like it, you definitely don't need it. Now, here in the US, soy can be genetically modified, which is dangerous. So please always go for the organic tofus if you can. And please understand the reason that soy is genetically modified is so we can feed all the animal soy. So your cows are eating soy. Soy, wheat, and corn are the three main food for dairy cows and beef eating cows and all other animal agriculture industry in the United States. Which means that if we eat animal products, we are getting genetically modified uh, organisms in our body mm -hmm. soy wheat and corn yeah so you want to buy organic soy wheat and corn as far as possible so and your thoughts everything if you can you know? yeah and definitely this don't do it. because sometimes these are hard to find but you'll definitely find them for example um dr nandita it's very hard to find edimame and organic edamame in, in the U.S., I'm so surprised. We are the biggest growers of soy in the country, in the world, I'm sure. And very hard to find. And most of the edamame that I have seen comes from China, all the way from China. Very strange. We don't know why. That's There's strange. no American company making edamame. That is fresh soybeans, green soybeans. Okay. So, so, but you can get them frozen pretty easily. That's also made in China. Know. Okay. So, uh, um, but in India, you don't get them at all. I, so. <laughs> I know. Your thoughts on yeah, diet grows have... a lot of soybeans as well. Exactly. Same thing, I'm sure. It's to put in processed foods, processed, you know, uh, the soy lecithins, the soy uh, soybean products used in processed food industry, as well as, uh, you know, feed for animals. Your thoughts on dietary supplements. So I'm sure what this person, uh, Yoga Sundarajan, I think what they mean is, um, do we need to take any supplements in terms so of B12, vitamin, vitamin C D or vitamin E or any of those supplements. But what we do need is vitamin B12 and vitamin D. And that too, not everybody. So it's always good to check and supplement. Here in the US, if you're having say plant-based milk every day, many of them are fortified already. But that doesn't mean it's enough. So please make sure that everyone in the family, whether vegan or non-vegan, checks and supplements vitamin B12 and D if, uh, if they, you know, just to be healthy. Yeah. So what precautions should we take for kids? Tita is asking. Uh, what because on a whole foods on a whole foods plant based kids diet. are humans they eat just the same as us no difference at all they don't need anything extra for their growth or you know for their well being or to play sports or anything like that definitely more food if they are into sports or very active but the same uh, but kind even of food. then their body will know how much they need so exactly eat when hungry drink when thirsty. Just keep that as a rule. And the converse also, don't eat when you're not hungry. Like today we have a habit of eating when we're not hungry, right? 
just because the food is good or it's lunchtime or it's comfort food or we're watching a movie. So also eat mindfully. That means when you're eating, don't do anything else. Don't put on that TV while you're having your meal. Or definitely not your cell phone. So uh, what is your take on coconut being high in saturated fats for heart and cholesterol as a part of plant-based diet? Fresh coconut, they mean. So coconut, fresh coconut, dry coconut, any coconut does not contain any cholesterol. So you don't have to worry about that. Cholesterol is a sterol. It's only made by animals and coconuts are plants. But coconut has saturated fat. You know, nature is never wrong. That means wherever there's more fat, there's more fiber. Think about a tender coconut. There's very little fat. There's no fiber or less fiber. But a mature coconut, there's more fat, more fiber. And an oil coconut, even more fat and even more fiber. That means nature has provided everything so that we cannot overeat. You can't overeat coconuts because if you chew them, you, you just can't eat too much of it, right? <laughs> but if you have coconut milk, you can overeat because it's a refined substance. So we don't want to have any refined substance. Exactly. So I think that's about it. Cold press oil. Oil is... Go ahead about oil. Okay, so... Plant-based oil, okay? Shan is asking. Yeah, you know, most of the oil is plant-based, but oil is, again, a refined product. And we don't want to use any refined product. But truly, fat is one of the biggest causes of disease. So no... Plant-based oil is not okay. It clogs the arteries. And any part of the body which doesn't get enough oxygenation is going to, it's going to cause disease. So please don't go there. So, you know, let's not say that oil is terrible. Oil should be had only once in a while when you're out and you have no way out. But we all need to learn how to cook without oil. Right, no matter what it is. And once you learn, you'll say, why was I cooking with oil all this time? Like it's so easy to cook delicious food without oil and I feel so good after it. And I've mm -hmm. solved my health problems too. What was I doing before? Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Okay, in December, do you have a 21-day retreat? Some people are asking. Yeah, no, we don't. Um, but we do have the 21 day retreat at a very special time. Why is June a special time? Because it's the beginning of the monsoon. So it's when it cools down and everything goes green. But it's also the season where we still get mangoes all through mm -hmm. the retreat. And so many people come from abroad and we have buffet meals and we really enjoy. And people eat a lot of mangoes. And they even reverse diabetes because sugar is not the cause of diabetes. Absolutely. Homemade organic soy milk for daily consumption. We covered that in milk. Um, sattvic diet and coconut oil in whole foods, plant-based, no oil. As you can say, WFPBNO means no oil. And yeah. you can't add any oil, even if it's coconut oil, even if it's cold pressed, even if it's so it's devoid of the fiber, devoid of all the nutrients. You can see that oil doesn't have nutrients. It's really devoid of any nutrients. It's just fat. Mm -hmm. right? And basically and it will raise our omega-6. Then we'll have a need for omega-3 to keep the balance and all. It's not required. I'm seeing this um, chai question. Like which milk can I use for chai and it never tasted as good as cow's milk and that's because cow's milk is addictive and we are habituated. But you know, when you use one toothpaste, you tend to go for the same toothpaste all the time. When you use one brand of tea, you go for the same brand of tea. When you consume cow's milk, you keep going for cow's milk. However, 
when you change it, you will get used to the new one pretty fast. It's a matter of a few days. So please don't wait to get sick to make the change. Make the change as soon as possible. There's Very true. time. And also, um, Dr. Nandita, when we shifted from whole milk to 2% milk to 1% milk and all these things, they never tasted the same anyway. So think about those days when you yourself Absolutely. have shifted from one to the other to the other. This It's the same kind of change. Yes. We, we can't be stuck on a specific kind of a taste. Your taste buds will adapt. That's why it takes only 21 days, three weeks for your taste buds to adapt, right? What should you feed a three to four month old baby on a whole food plant based milk. diet? I'm assuming? Mother's milk, three to four months. We have to think what did nature expect for us to consume, right? Three to four months means that you don't have teeth. You must be drinking your mother's milk. But what should the mother have? The mother should have the highest quality food that she can have. Right? Uh, Toral has asked, where can I buy your books from? And you can buy our books from our website. You just go to the resources section under publications. And if you want the diabetes book that uh, Dr. Nandita Shah has authored, I have copies in my home. You can come and pick it up and oh, buy wonderful. it. Wonderful. And uh, Tita has uh, uh, said that, you know, she really likes Sharon's programs. Thank you, Tita, for that. Yes. And um, I hope not too much dates either. I used to get so many dental problems. Now on whole food plant-based, dental problems are also gone. Yes. So, you know, we should go for dates instead of other sweeteners. And over a period of time, we will not need so much sweetening also because our tastes will change. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think uh, we are coming yeah, up on... We are done. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much, Dr. Nandita. If you have any questions... Um, you know, feel free to ask in our support group and I can even find out the answers from Dr. Nandita and post it for you. So um, thank you very much, Dr. Nandita. This time we couldn't get Dr. Nandita to Atlanta to have an in-person workshop. So this is a wonderful substitute and a wonderful learning experience to hear from her. And just to reiterate to ourselves, you know, that we are on the right path. This is a good way, method forward. And this is the best food we can put in our bodies, just like the right kind of fuel you need for your car. Exactly the same kind. We need to put the best fuel available for this body, which is our car. And just like you do for your cars and take such good care of it, you need to do more so for your own oh, body. Okay, okay Bh Bharti has asked one last question and I'm just going to quickly answer it. Shobha, can you please ask what should we give to a three, four month old baby instead of milk? So uh, if if you if the mother doesn't have milk, we should find out why. But anyhow, you can get vegan milk supplements in that you can give vegan formulas for infants that you can give. And as soon as they are able to take a little, you can give. The very best thing to do is give raw. And what can we give raw? Mashed fruit. So start with bananas and move up to other fruits like papaya or whatever your baby likes. Remember, the baby is born with instincts. It knows how to heal itself or how to take care of itself. So if you put different things in front of the baby and let the baby choose... And of course, a three, four month old baby cannot choose, but you put a few different things in its mouth, whatever it likes, it can take. But remember, it's better to wait a little longer because a three, four month old baby largely needs, um, you know, a milk formula, but you can start with a little bit of fruit. Exactly. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks. Awesome, awesome. You yeah, you can actually there. you can actually make banana milk, uh, Dr. Nandita. And I used to teach in uh, schools um, where their economic, um, you know, uh, uh, level of the those students there where they could not afford to buy all these fancy plant milks. And so I taught them how to make banana milk. Right. So take a banana, add a little water, run it through the blender, 
and it's white in color. It substitutes really well for anything you want to use milk for. And it's delicious also, even if you just drink it. Yeah, it's like a banana milkshake, but you don't need the milk. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So it was wonderful. Anybody who wants to get in touch with me can do so. I'll send you a few links that you can join. Sharon has a WhatsApp support group as well. I'll send you the link for that. So wonderful, Dr. Nandita. Thank you very much. And you. hope your stay in the US is wonderful. And uh, if there are any other online talks that you're giving, let us know. And many of us would love to join. Yeah, not online talks, but I am doing two in Maryland uh, in the beginning of next month. And so they're live. And if anyone wants to come there, that means if you know someone in the Washington, D.C. area, then please go to our website and see those talks. Let me see if I can show them to you. That's in person, right? Is it going in to be person, telecast on, yes. on Facebook or YouTube or something? Is it going to be telecast too? Or no? no, no, it's not going to be. But there are so many talks on YouTube. So I will share that. with my groups. Um, and, our, and our Food for Life instructors and everybody all across the country. So people will come in Maryland. Okay. Thank you. Both that. the talks are in Maryland? Yeah, the next two talks are in Maryland. We already had a few here in uh, California. But I'm leaving day after tomorrow. And the next two talks are in Maryland. Maryland. Okay, wonderful. Next in time you come, we should month. plan for a retreat in Florida. Okay? <laughs> we'll do that. Okay. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Bye, bye. Okay. Thank you very much. And good evening and good night. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thanks for arranging this, Shobha. Really oh, thanks, it. Ramesh. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Yeah, she's a plethora of information. And she has so many patients that she has helped, Ramesh. So it's, it's just a very... Um, it, it reiterates to us and gives us so much motivation to learn from her because her patients are getting better every day. And even her personal story is just amazing. Good so show. yeah, go on YouTube and listen to her personal story. It's wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye, 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 Dr. Nandita. Bye.